Hi, my name is Natasha from Finley Creek Soap Company, and in this video I am making some sample sized bars of my Finley Creek handmade soap. I'm starting the process off by mixing my lye water solution. This is a mixture of water and sodium hydroxide. I typically prepare this um, a few hours to a day in advance. That's because when we mix these um, two components together, it creates a lot of heat. And I want that heat to dissipate before I add this to my oils and butters. Now that that is off to the side and cooling, I am going to prepare the oils for this soap. The first step is to melt the hard oils and the butters. My soap uses a mixture of coconut oil, cocoa butter, and shea butter. I'm going to melt these using a water bath. It isn't necessary to use a water bath, using a microwave works just fine. I used a microwave for many years when I was making soap in my kitchen. Um, I recently moved down to a workshop in my basement that unfortunately doesn't have a microwave. So using a water bath was much preferable to trudging up and down the stairs with my oils. One thing I really like about the water bath is that it melts everything nice and gently. This can be a bit of a concern when you're melting cocoa butter. Anyone who's tried to melt chocolate in the microwave at full power knows how grainy and nasty it can get. When I was using a microwave to heat my oils, I would use the residual heat from the coconut oil in order to melt the cocoa butter and shea butter. Now that the solids are all liquid, it's time to add the rest of our liquid oils. The liquid oils are made up of a mixture of olive oil, hemp seed oil, and castor oil. Each of these oils lend different properties to the final bar of soap. If you are a soap maker and are curious about this recipe, you can find it in the description box below. The last thing I'm adding to my oil mix is a couple teaspoons of kaolin clay. This adds a really nice slip um, and creaminess to the final bar of soap. I'm going to give the oils a quick mix with my immersion blender and this helps to disperse the clay um, into the oils and knock out all the lumps. There are a number of different ways that you can incorporate clay into soap. The one disadvantage I find with this method is that it can result in a lot of air bubbles being mixed throughout the oils. Um, if these are still there when we add our lye solution, uh, they can end up in the bar of soap, which results in a weird texture or little bumps throughout the final bars. Before I mix everything together, I'm going to prepare the colorants for this soap. I'm using synthetic mica powders, um, and if you are interested in the particular ones I'm using, you can also find those in the description box below. Just like with the clay, there are a number of different techniques that you can use in order to prepare your colors. I prefer to mix mine on a piece of acrylic with a palette knife, and I'm going to mix it with some extra olive oil. This helps me feel confident that I have removed all of the lumps in the powders before I add it to my soap batter. As soon as I combine the oils and the lye solution together, a chemical reaction called saponification begins. The mixture will thicken and thicken and thicken until it eventually forms into a solid bar. If I add the mica powders directly to the soap, I can mix them in by blending them together with my immersion blender. However, using the immersion blender also speeds up the saponification reaction, which results in the soap getting too thick too quickly. 
I am a sucker for some pretty awesome swirls in my bars of soap. And if the batter is too thick, we don't get those nice swirls. So I want to keep it as fluid as I can for as long as I can. Pre-mixing the colors and oil before I add them to the batter means that I can avoid excessive use of my immersion blender while still ensuring that they are completely incorporated. just about ready to bring it all together. The last thing I'm going to do is add a bit of sodium lactate to my lye solution. Sodium lactate is an excellent humectant, which means it draws moisture from the atmosphere to your skin. And it also helps to create a harder bar of soap. I'm going to use my immersion blender to combine the oils and the lye solution. While I'm doing this, I'm being really mindful of how quickly they are incorporating. I'm going to blend until we reach an emulsion where I no longer see any extra oil floating on top. For a batch of soap this size, I find it takes about 15 to 30 seconds. I must confess, seeing these two things combined can be really mesmerizing and I have been guilty of kind of getting lost in the moment and blending it a bit more than I had initially intended. At this point, I'm happy with how well these have incorporated and that is it for my immersion blender. However, I am going to continue stirring by hand throughout the process um, just to ensure that everything continues on the way I want it to. The next step is to divide the soap into the three different colors. I'm using about a sixth of the batter or roughly 200 grams for the green and blue sections and the remainder is going to be colored white. For this design, I'm not completely concerned about being precise with my measurements. Being close enough is just fine. Here we can see just how easily I can incorporate these pre-mixed colorants into the soap batter. Next, I'm going to incorporate the fragrance oil into each of the three colors. The fragrance I'm using is called Oud and Bergamot from Morouge, Canada. This fragrance smells fantastic. Um, it has a lot of bright citrus notes like bergamot, orange, and lime, and it combines it with cedar wood and oud wood. It's a really fresh fragrance, and I absolutely love working with it. My Finley Creek soaps are named after streets and places in my community and here in South Ottawa. And this scent reminds me of going for hikes on the boardwalk um, in our neighborhood. Plus, it is fantastic to work with in soap. Fragrances can do some pretty gnarly things in soap batter. They can cause it to thicken really quickly, which is called acceleration, or separate, which is called ricing. They can even change the soap into a different color altogether. Thankfully, this fragrance doesn't do any of those things. So if you haven't tried it, I really encourage you to do so. And in case you're wondering, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I'm just happy to support another Canadian small business. A 
At this point, the soap is still very runny, which is great. However, the technique that I'm using for this soap needs it to be a bit thicker. Now I could get my immersion blender out and give it another few hits to help thicken it up. That will definitely speed up the process. The concern I have though, is that if I blend it too much, it might get too thick and I have no way of thinning it out again. So my best option is to have patience and wait for it to thicken on its own. I'll come back periodically to give it a quick stir and see where it's at. I'm going to be doing an in the pot swirl where I mix all three colors together before pouring it into the mold. So I'm looking for the batter to be around a light to medium light trace. In other words, this means when I lift the spatula and let the soap drizzle down, it should leave a path across the top of the batter. If the soap is too runny, then the colors will kind of blur together when they're poured out. But if it's too thick, then they'll end up being blocky and that's not really the effect I'm going for. Once I'm happy with where things are at, I'm going to combine everything together. The next time I do this technique, I think I'm going to try lifting the blue and the green colors higher when I pour them into the white. Um, as I'm pouring it in, I'm noticing that a lot of the green and blue has rested on the top part of the soap, leaving the white to last. It's nothing wrong with it, and if I hadn't said anything, you probably wouldn't know, but it's something I'm going to keep in mind for future batches. I'm going to add the extra blue and green soap that was left in the containers to the top and give it a little swirl. The effect might not be too obvious on these bars because they're samples and they're going to be very thin, but I just can't resist a nice swirly top. Now that the hard part is done, I am going to let this soap sit on a heating mat until it is firm enough to take out of the mold and cut into bars, which for this recipe usually takes about 24 hours. Cutting the soap is actually my favorite part, especially with these techniques where the swirl is hidden inside of the bar. It's always fun to see just how these soaps turn out. These bars ended up being about 20 grams or roughly one ounce in weight each. If you grabbed one at the market, I hope you love it as much as I do.